Hey friends, it's Bodrich. It's a new video. Uh, this is uh, an extension of the extending the extensions video here because now I have used this link hints, which I uh, is a browser extension available for both Firefox and the Chromium based browsers uh that hints links basically that's uh, that's what it does uh, as the name uh, implies uh i used to use a different extension for this uh i i have to it feels like i tell this story like every video here so i will try not to do it but i used to use uh, something that was called cvim and then later it was uh, turned into v before c or v before c superseded this and blah 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 but it's one of these, you know, you can hint links and you can do this with uh, link hints as well. But um, CVIM and VB4C and Vimium and all these guys, they have something like this as well, like a command bar, which also can be used as an address bar, um, where you can enter ad <laughs> commands and addresses. This is something that v uh, link hints doesn't have. Uh, another thing is that when you install one of these uh, uh, CVIM-like extensions, you often end up binding a lot of key bindings uh, via that uh, extension because you can do do these uh, single key uh, um, hotkeys to to execute browser commands. For example, close a tab, switch tab, um, paste a URL from the clipboard, and stuff like that. Um, and the extensions often become like, yeah, this big monster of twisted configuration files and stuff like that. But when you got everything set up, it's kind of neat as long as it works. But uh, as I mentioned in that last video, VB4C stopped working on a lot of web pages and stuff like that. And that meant I didn't have an address bar. I, I couldn't switch tab. I couldn't do anything really. Extremely annoying. Uh, now with link hints, only this built-in uh, uh, or, or only hinting links. Um, I had to find uh, uh, some alternative ways to get uh, uh, some of the good features that uh, CVIM and VB4C provided for me. I wanted, I still wanted some some of the functionality. Uh, and I wanted to try to, to get that functionality from uh, as much as possible from uh, the browser itself, like configurations in the browser. So I will show you here a couple of things that I have found during these weeks uh, uh, since I started using um, link hints. Uh, so this is not about the extensions. These are about settings I've done in the browser and, and uh, functionality I have found and stuff like that. Most of it, uh, or this is Vivaldi uh, I am using, and some of it is Vivaldi specific, but a lot of it is also uh, applicable to other uh, browsers as well. First thing, uh, this uh, address bar thing. I still don't have an address bar in my uh, uh, window here now. Instead, I'm using this. Uh, this is built into uh, um, Vivaldi. It's called the quick command uh, pop-up window or something like that. And you can use this as a URL bar. Uh, for example, I can type google.com here, press enter, and that will switch to google.com. We can immediately see one important difference here, and that is that I can actually bring this window up here, even when I am on a Chrome Web Store here, for example, or even these built-in um, built pages like this is like the, a browser built-in page. Uh, Chrome colon slash slash version or Vivaldi colon slash slash version. Uh, on these types of pages, the built-in pages in the browser, uh, extensions don't work. You, we can see that they are disabled here. The icons are grayed out. Uh, so extension don't work on these pages. And that meant that I couldn't uh, use uh, V before C before I couldn't switch tab. I couldn't bring up the address bar. I couldn't do anything. I had to manually select a different tab with the mouse or something like that. Um, or what I usually did was uh, using page, uh, control page up and control page down, which are uh, uh, default tab switching uh, key bindings that works in most browsers as far as I know. Uh, but another thing you can do with this uh, quick launch thing is you can actually execute browser commands here as well, which is really cool. So this is a kind of a command bar as well. Um, I think I want to bring up this guy. 
or is it keyboard? There you see, keyboard cheat sheet. Uh, a really cool thing with the commands is also that it displays the, the, the yeah, the, the keyboard shortcut you can press to bring up this command. But if we select cheat sheet here, we can see all the key bindings. Uh, and I want to go through some of them uh, that I have, some of them I didn't know before I delved into this and, and uh, I have customized a, a bunch here. One thing I added is this new private window. I set that to control N. The default uh, control N action is to just open a new Vivaldi window. And that's something that I never use. So instead I, I changed that to, to open a new private window. Quick commands F2, I just showed you that. Then we have the task manager, which is really cool. So we can bring up the task manager with shift escape like that. Great. Um, settings, control F12 is the default uh, uh, key binding and I have it set up so it uh, uh, spawns in this container, whatever. Uh, bookmarks, whatever, Vivaldi help, sheet sheet, what we are looking at here. And can also filter this to, to just show like tabs or something like that. It's great. Um, but you cannot change keyboard uh, uh, shortcuts here. You have to go into the settings and, and select keyboard here. And here you can actually change these uh, 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 things and I think this also it only displays the one you have actually set as you can see there are a lot of them that they are unset here some of them I am manually unset and some are yeah you get it uh, developer tools this is another thing I change it's just a small thing but for example if I am on a, on a web page I can press f12 and you can that, that was the the normal uh, functionality but I change it so so it also uh, selects um, in this inspect element mode so I can select something and then it automatically uh, show me that in, in, in the dev tools window here I find that uh, very useful and I can't believe I haven't uh, done it before because what I used to do was like I, I want to expect this element and then I right click that and select inspect sure it say here control shift I but that just mean open the, the dev tools window uh, there were no good way to, to inspect a specific element like that. Saves a couple of clicks, it's not, not a big deal. Um, so I set that to F12. I switched these around, I think, or something like that. Then we have redo, blah, blah, blah. These are uh, kind of important because I think this one pastes as plain text. I wonder if that wasn't unset by default. I added Control shift v as the uh, shortcut for that so I can paste plain text and uh, not uh, paste any formatting like bold text or different fonts and stuff like that. You have probably experienced it when you are trying to um, copy paste something into a mail. Uh, if you are using a webmail thing, then it often pastes like these weird uh, fonts and stuff like that and sometimes even background colors and things like that. This uh, removes that so you can paste without formatting. Uh, but then this one, this was the original Control shift v I changed it uh, to, or, or I set Control p for this. Uh, and paste and go, what that means is that I can, if I have a URL in my clipboard, for example, altavista.com. If I put this in my clipboard, whoops, do this, now it's in my clipboard. And then I can press Control p in the browser. And that should paste and go to that URL, which happens to be, oh, I guess, Yahoo bought Alta Vista. Good deal, guys. Um, yeah, so that's that's what that is. Um, what, what that? <sighs> Pressing all kinds of keys here, I'm getting confused. Uh, here we are, Control F1. Uh, and the reason I'm using Control P for that is that this is one of the things I was I, I immediately start uh, realized I missed from VB4C uh, was the ability to to if I pressed P then it would do this it would uh, go to the web page currently in my clipboard. Um, but the one feature I'm still missing here is the ability to go to the URL in my clipboard but open it in a new tab. I really wish they had that as a default option here in Vivaldi, but they don't. So I, I actually think 
I miss it so much that I think I will add that to Lincoln's here, even if it's not really related to my fork, uh, I should say, because I have my personal fork. It's not public yet, but I will make it public with, with these uh, extra f features. So you can press like Control Shift P to open uh, the URL in your clipboard in a new tab. But I haven't added that yet, but that's uh, one of those things that I'm missing uh, a little bit. Let's move on here to see uh, we have a page zoom and you can see some of these are grayed out like here zero is is like uh, yeah it's even says so here single key shortcuts are disabled uh, this is kind of interesting because you can actually add um, at least in Vivaldi here you can enable this single key shortcuts and then you can actually have single key shortcuts just like uh, uh, cvim vb4c vimium and stuff like that and it uh, seems to work fine, but I have came to realize that single key shortcuts uh, is not a good idea in the browser if it's not like these, like F uh, function keys like this. Um, I, I think I talked about it in, in, in that extending the extensions video. So I don't think there's anything interesting here. Let's go to tabs. This one uh, I added uh, Control Shift W, and that will open that will move the current tab to a new window. So if I press con Control Shift W here, uh, now it moved that tab to a new window, and all vi my Vivaldi windows always opens in this container except the main one here. I have set it up in i3 and stuff like that, whatever. Uh, but that's useful sometimes, especially when you are making a web page. You might want to have two versions of a web page open at the same time, or something like that. It's uh, sometimes useful to be able to do this. But you can also, uh, uh, I can take this tab from this window and drop it on the tab bar in this one, and that kind of works. And now that window automatically closed. And if I want to do this with the mouse, I can just drag the, the window out into nowhere, like or the tab into nowhere, like that, and then it also does the same thing. But it's nice to be able to do that with a key binding. Uh, so I added that to Control Shift W. I don't know. I'm, it just felt right to have it there. Uh, and Control W to close tab. Always good to have as a backup. Then we have these uh, control page up, control page down to switch tabs. Uh, here I added control K and control J just because I got so used to uh, use shift K and shift J, which I can still add here uh, because shift K and shift J, they, those are actually not single key shortcuts and they are, um, uh, you're allowed to, to just use them if you want to. But I, I changed it here to Control K, Control J uh, to switch tabs uh, previous and next. And since I have a vertical tab bar, it's also up and down, you know. So that's great. Uh, that's one thing I added. I also added uh, these move active tab uh, backward and forward. I think I want to let, let's open a, a tab with a favicon there now of course i close that other one so if we do there okay uh, control k switches to that tab and then control shift k moves it up control shift j moves it down so now i can move tabs and i i find this useful as well sometimes you just want to quickly group a, a bunch of tabs and and it's easy to do with this visual representation that it is here with the favicons and stuff like that Whatever, I find it useful. I want to have that feature. So I think those were either disabled or had some awkward uh, default uh, keyboard com uh, combination. Now, Control K, Control Shift K, it kind of makes sense. Uh, it's uh, manipulating the tab somehow. Reopen this, blah, blah, blah. Nothing interesting there. Great bookmarks, no. Here, this is something that I'm not 100% satisfied with yet because in uh, Vim and uh, CVim and everything, you can, uh, a capital G or shift G that scrolls to the bottom of the page and GG scrolls to the top of the page. That's a, a classic Vim binding. And I use this all, all, all the time. I didn't really realize I did use it that much, but I. I immediately uh, realized I missed the, that uh, 
the ability to go to the top and the bottom of the page. I think you can do that with like control end and control home. That kind of works. But I wanted it on the home row uh, like that. So I added here now control shift G to go to the uh, bottom and control G to go to the top. But uh, I'm not, uh, I don't like these, uh, this uh, key binding. It's, there is something with or something is not that uh, difficult to understand what it is. But the finger position uh, when pressing control shift G is, is not nice. And even control G, it, 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 it's a bit of a stretch, so to speak. Uh, just try it out and you see what I mean. So I think I will try to find uh, something, something else for the, that functionality. But I would like to have it not on control home and control end, which actually works here, uh, even if it's not in, in uh, control end and control home wasn't visible here. I think it's some kind of a built-in uh, page navigation thing. It, it often works in, in text editors and stuff as well, control home and control end. Just so you know, uh, finding page, this was default was control F. I changed it to control slash to be more, yeah, because I always use slash. It's uh, the default Vim uh, way of starting a, a search on page, you know? No, it didn't work here, but there, oh, what's this? Now I press control slash and it selected all the text instead. Well, Okay, control slash. No, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it doesn't work. Not sure what's going on there, why why it selects all. Um, page, can I move this around or something? Finding page, I don't know. It's supposed to do this at least, um, whatever. But these are uh, two that I added as well, control H and control L. And now we can see all the H, J, K, L being represent represented. Uh, I think this also makes sense, like going back, control H, control L, going forward, like left and right in Vim uh, brain. But I kept the, the default uh, navigation as well. And this is something I had, uh, I always have in browsers is like history back uh, map to backspace. And I also have mouse button back, uh, the button that presses back. If you have the, those kinds of my, mice uh, or mouse, that is remapped to backspace in my configuration. So I can press the mouse to delete text, but in the browser, when I press that button, it still sends backspace, but backspace in turn goes to history back. So I still have the same functionality everywhere. Uh, it's kind of neat. Um, but most of the time I actually use this control H and control L if I must navigate the, the history. These guys, I think I will delete them because I hate when I accidentally open these dialogues. Special navigation, I will delete those as well. Don't worry. Copy selected text and note, whatever. I will just keep it, but I never use it. Okay, so those are the key bindings. Then I would also like to show you this with a uh, qu quick command uh, thing here. If I enter an address like google.com and press enter, it opens google.com in that uh, current tab. I can press control H to go back to the previous uh, uh, URL, but I can also type google.com and then hold shift and pressing enter and that will open it in a new tab. If you always want uh, uh, whatever you enter in the quick command window to open in, in a new tab, you can set this option. But I, I kind of prefer this because then I can control it. Uh, but you can also do this. You can do google.com and then control shift enter. That will open it in a new, no, that opens in a new window. Um, let's see now, in so many keys. google.com. And then it's control and enter. And that, en that opens uh, the URL in a new uh, tab, but it doesn't switch to the tab. So shift, switch to the tab, control opens it in the background, control and shift opens it in a new window if you ever would like to do that. 
Uh, all this functionality was uh, available and something I used all the time in uh, VB4C. So that's great. All, all of that uh, baked. In, I got the uh, got it with default Vivaldi uh, uh, settings here, and it, it it feels really really nice. Um, there are just a couple of things I would like to add here now uh, that I still miss. One is that uh, open a URL in a new tab from the clipboard. That is something I did uh, from now and then, and I. Uh, I have found myself several times missing that feature, so I, I think I will add it here. Another thing is, uh, at the moment, I can press Alt and Y, and that uh, copies the the URL to the of the current page to the clipboard. So I got it here now. Uh, but I can only copy the current URL. If I want to copy it like this URL, for example, there's no sane way, in my opinion, to do so. I think I can do Alt Shift. L, then hold Alt and select a link like M there, for example, the Franken WM there, and then press M I, uh, while holding the Alt key. Uh, and now I think yes, that copied the URL, but I have it. It feels too unreliable because sometimes it feels like it copies the text and not the URL, and it also uh, Alt Shift L. It lets you select uh, elements on the page. So if I don't hold hold the the Alt key and press M now, now it selects the text. If I hold the Alt key, it copies the element. If that element is a link, it copies the URL. So it it, it, it can be a bit. Uh, sometimes you accidentally copies text when you actually want to copy a URL and stuff like that. I would like to add a hint mode here that always copies URLs and only hint uh, actual links because Alt-Shift-L um, lets you select any element uh, on the web page. So that's a feature I would like to add as well. Uh, not a big deal at all to, to do so. Um, and then there's uh, one last uh, feature here and this applies to all, all browsers. Let's open search here. Um, and we can actually, let's delete these two. They are good examples here and we can easily recreate them. Because another thing uh, that I used um, VB4C uh, was that uh, you could set up uh, search engines in VB4C and then use that special address bar to uh, um, search for things, of course. So for example, if I uh, typed G for Google, and then uh, a query, and then it would automatically uh, search for that uh, query on Google for me, so I didn't have to go to google.com and then enter the, the search query. And as you can see, this is a default functionality that exists in all browsers, I believe. Uh, you can do this here as well. Uh, I know it's hard to read here, but there is a nickname. For example, DuckDuckGo has the nickname D, Wikipedia has a, a nickname W, Google G, I also, this is a custom one, 4chan with four, and then I have YouTube with a Y. Uh, and as, as you might imagine, this, this works with a quick command here. So I can just press Y and then I can do driving on nine here because that's a song that's on my mind. Uh, press shift enter to open it in a new tab. And there it automatically search for, uh, for uh, that query on YouTube. I could also search for it on Wikipedia, for example. And then it does that. And same thing here, I could also hold shift to open it in a new tab and control and all of that stuff works when you're searching as well. Um, creating these uh, search queries is uh, really easy. So, but you can also uh, uh, um, set them up, you don't have to make a search query out of it. Because what, what you do is you enter the, the URL for, for queries here, uh, which you can figure out somehow uh, for YouTube. It's this and then search query equals percentage S and percentage S here will be replaced with whatever, whatever you write. Uh, but this means that you could also do something like this. So I'd like to create one that's called subreddit. Uh, and then we can have nickname R and then the URL, https colon slash slash reddit.com slash r slash percentage s. 
And this means now that we have, uh, we can do R and then uh, we can do um, Unix born if we want to do that. And then it should automatically just go to Unix born. It doesn't search on Reddit for this. Instead, it goes to the uh, subreddit that I entered. Um, I know, yeah, you get it. And this is a really quick way to navigate, for example, uh, um, or the fastest even to navigate subreddits, uh, subreddits. And I have something similar set up here for 4chan, but uh, let's not demo that because of reasons, you know. Um, but Reddit, um, some maybe you would like to also be able to search on Reddit. Uh, then I'd like to do something like this. Um, if we go to reddit.com, I want to go to the main page here. Uh, because then I know that the search on Reddit is for, yeah, the main Reddit itself. And I have this stupid sliding sliding uh, search thing here. So it automatically hides when I do stuff here. But what you can do when you have a search box on a web page is you can right click it, add as search engine, and then it will suggest here uh, reddit.com. Maybe we can call it reddit whatever, let's call it reddit.com and then nickname, let's give this the nickname RS for Reddit search. And as you can see, it automatically created here, search, queue, this stuff. I think I did this with YouTube to add that, for example, just uh, right clicked uh, the search field. Then you add this and we can see we got it there. And now I can search Reddit from here if I want to. So RS and then we can search for Bing. So I'm searching for a search engine with a search engine. It's uh, kind of crazy, but it works. And now here I'm searching for Bing on Reddit. You could add this for all kinds of stuff, you know, because it's not just search engines like Google and DuckDuckGo and Bing. You could add this for Twitter or whatever, you know. Um, and that, uh, that has also replaced a lot of, of stuff that I previously managed with VB4C. One feature uh, that I used uh, a lot uh, that I don't think I will um, replace here, I just uh, have to live without it, I believe, is that VB4C and CVIM and those uh, guys, uh, they often have something that's called, um, I think it's like a quick, quick launch or something like that. And it was set up so, so that if you just pressed go, like G-O, uh, the characters on the keyboard, and then... Um, then um, another character, for example, Y, so G-O-Y, Goy, would take you to YouTube if you have set it up like that. And then you could have G-O-R, go to Reddit or something like that. I, that was a fast way to go to your uh, um, bo favorite bookmarks or whatever. But, you know, there are millions of ways you could do that uh, if you want to. Um, so I, I, I will just not add that uh, or try to add that feature. I can live without it. Um, but really impressed with this quick command. And another thing I, I just noticed here, uh, this must be brand new in Vivaldi, is that um, I think it is in my old Vivaldi videos. I complain about some a, a lot of hidden uh, browser extensions, like Google browser extensions, that was impossible to disable. And I, it, it really was impossible to disable it in Vivaldi. For example, Chromecast, Media Router. I don't even know what what I would use that for. Hangouts. All of these uh, are enabled by default uh, in Vivaldi for some weird reason. Uh, I disabled all of these. I'm not sure uh, what, what this crypto token does, but I, I noticed that I had to enter a bunch of CAPTCHAs, for example, which I never have to do otherwise. I think that is related to this. This crypto token is like an identification thingy. I, I'm not sure. I shouldn't say anything more because I don't know. But I disabled it and I disabled the Chromecast media router. I disabled Hangouts, which I never use here in... Um, and that's just great to see that you can um, disable this finally. And even if, even if you don't care about the privacy issues that it might uh, uh, might have, it at least saves you some resources since these are stuff that I just don't work and they are somehow running in the background even if it's not draining your system or anything, but it is something. Now that doesn't 
that works. Whatever. It's a bit unrelated, but it is something. Um, and also these Google services. I didn't really know about this as well. Uh, this is like Google is helping you, uh, protecting you from phishing and malware protection. And, you know, these type of things, I don't really know how it works. Like for Google to be able to help me, then Google have to keep, keep an eye on everything I'm doing basically just to make sure that I don't uh, accidentally try to install a malware or something like that, you know. So I just disable these. I don't... I hope, uh, or I, I'm sure that this this sends a little less data to Google, and and uh, that's some somehow a win. Uh, I'm not saying that Vivaldi in any ways uh, are are like a solution to to browse the internet privately or anything, and and part of Vivaldi's closed source and Vivaldi, uh, it is known that some uh, they they gather some telemetry i'm sure and uh, stuff like that uh, that's just uh, it is what it is <laughs> I, um, but at least we are not sending more more stuff to google but this might also i i don't recommend this in case you are really worried about phishing and stuff then you might want this extra protection whatever i i don't know i disabled it um, but I really, I'm really enjoying Vivaldi. It it feels like such a good browser. That's get and and it gets better all the time. Um, like every update, it it actually gets better, feels faster, and more stable. That, and that's something that's uh, it, it feels like a rare thing nowadays. Um, and I'm really happy with this link hints instead of VB4C. I, I will soon upload my patches and stuff and I, I have thought about also making or what I have done uh, I am more or less done with it uh, uh, because I added a bunch of different features uh, I don't have to talk about them now really because I made a whole video about it uh, but the, it, as it is now there are like three different things that I have added to it um, and I think I will make pull requests out of every one of them to, to the official uh, Linkins repository and then just see if, if they get merged. I don't think all of them will, but uh, it can be good to separate things like that anyways. And it also makes it easy for others to just see what my fork actually does. Or if you just want to include one of the patches or, or uh, hacks that I have applied, then it will be easy to do so if you know how to do it. <laughs> Whatever. Um, have a great day, everybody. Bye.